the Catholic Church. That's right here on CBSN. More than 15 weeks after the midterms, North Carolina is planning a new election in its ninth district, where a controversial congressional race is still undecided. Republican Mark Harris admitted yesterday that his 905 vote lead may have tainted, may have been tainted by possible election fraud. His reversal followed days of sometimes emotional testimony about alleged misdeeds by a political operative working for his campaign. David Begno has more details. It's become clear to me that the public's confidence in the 9th District seat general election has been undermined to an extent that a new election is warranted. It was a stunning reversal by Republican Mark Harris following four days of witness testimony about claims of ballot fraud, yes. allegedly involving this man, McCray Dallas, who Harris hired to get out the vote. Dallas was accused of hiring workers to illegally collect absentee ballots, forge voter and witness signatures, and in some cases, fill out ballots for Republican candidates. I just, I didn't sense that. Yesterday, Harris testified in front of the Board of Elections that he was unaware of any concerns regarding Dallas. But the tipping point was his son, who testified earlier in the week. I love my dad, I love my mom. Mark Harris looked on in tears as his son John, who is an attorney himself, said he repeatedly warned his dad. I told him in the phone call that I thought they were illegally collecting the ballots. The younger Harris had said that on the phone and in emails. His father, realizing he was going to be questioned about it, admitted misstatements and said health issues had affected his memory. He asked the board for a new election. Say aye. 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 The head of North Carolina's GOP, Dallas Woodhouse, said the outcome is devastating. Do you think that a new election is the right decision? I, I think what we have stated is we support Dr. Harris's decision to call for a new election. Um, but, but is that the right decision? I, I think because he called for it, it is the right decision. The attorney for the Democrat candidate called the decision a win for the North Carolina voters. They. Uh, will have an opportunity to have a free and fair election that is not the product of fraud or taint. David Begno joins us now from Raleigh, North Carolina. So David, now that the board has called the new election, what happens next? And do we know if Mark Harris is even going to run again? No, we have no idea if Mark Harris is going to run again. His wife said he's going to think about it. He wouldn't answer our questions as to whether he's going to run again. But they go all the way back to the beginning. You start all over with a primary. It's an expensive, long process. And as of right now, there's no one representing the 9th District of North Carolina in the Congress right now. So can we talk about this ongoing criminal investigation into what happened in the 9th District? Where are we with that? Well, we don't know a lot about the criminal investigation other than Mr. Dallas, who's sort of the subject of the investigation as it was presented before the Board of Elections. The local district attorney is looking at him. The question is, what else is she going to look at in terms of what evidence was presented before the Board of Elections? Listen, the board didn't even get through the entire uh, evidentiary hearing, if you will, because Mr. Harris got up there and said, uh, you know, based on some memory issues I'm having and some misstatements that I made, I think you should do a new election. Anyway, walked out the building. I mean, it was that simple. And so within a couple of hours, the board decided, okay, unanimously, let's call for another election. You know, David, your uh, piece for the evening news and for CBS This Morning today was just so powerful, um, especially the one from this morning when we saw what happened in that hearing room yesterday. His son on the stand there essentially saying that what his father did was not right. Mm -hmm. I mean, just describe that. It, it yeah. was kind of, it was almost Shakespearean in a way. I got to tell you, before joining you guys here on CBSN, I actually sent out a tweet saying how much respect I have for John Harris. This is a 29 year old man who's a lawyer, used to work um, for a federal court in Washington, D.C., now works here in North Carolina. And basically, he got on the stand and said, listen, I called the Board of Elections initially and said, I repeatedly warned my father. I gave you guys documents showing conversations that I had with my dad. I don't think my dad intentionally did anything wrong, but there were so many red flags that my father ignored. I mean, he essentially testified against his dad. Now, what ended up happening was the father, Mark Harris, who's a pastor, a Southern Baptist preacher, sat in the audience the entire time and, and watched this, listened to him, right? And so when Mr. Harris got up on the stand, it became clear that he didn't think his son's emails were going to be presented as evidence. And 
And right, of, right as the attorney was about to cross-examine Mark Harris and say, what about all these times your son said to you and your wife, here's a red flag, here's a red flag. What about all those? How did you not know anything? Mark Harris's attorney called for a break, and when they came back from a break, that's where Mr. Harris said, you know, I made some misstatements, I had two strokes recently, my memory is affected, I'm having recall issues, and I think we need to have another election. The reality is, while in some cases people may be thinking, okay, that's good, he said there should be another election, he's following the will of the people, there are other folks who say, wait a minute, this guy got away a little scot-free. Why is he allowed to sit on the stand and say, you know what, just go ahead and do another election. I'm going to leave now. A lot of people wanted him to sit there and be peppered under cross-examination, but he got away before that could happen. So, uh, again, the, the, the main question now is, is Mark Harris, given recall issues, given misstatements, given red flags, given all the evidence presented here, is he going to run for election? And if he does, can he win? Yeah, well, we saw sort of the images of him, of him sort of crying as he was listening to some of the testimony. If there's one thing he can, he can feel good right. about is that he clearly raised a fine young man, an honorable young man. Sure. Um, so on the other side, Fair. though, we have the, Demo the Democratic uh, candidate, Dan yep. McCready. He, um, took, he withdrew his concession shortly after uh, the election. But, you know, another election is going to cost him a lot of money, too. I'm just wondering, you know, what's his take on this? Good point. Yeah, look, this is an expensive election. I got to tell you, I hadn't seen hide nor tail of Mr. McCready. You know who we did see? The Libertarian candidate who was there for all of it, seated at the table, sort of a party to all of this. And he said, this is great news for me because he said, you know what I'm going to do? He said, if Mark Harris decides to run again, I'm going to use everything presented here at this hearing as something against him. So the Libertarian candidate saw it as an advantage. Uh, McCready, who knows? I don't know. But, but again, we go all the way back to the beginning. And to your point, Anne-Marie, this is, this is a multi-million dollar process to run for an election again. Um, meanwhile, the seat's empty in D.C. Wow. And, you know, you got to wonder, he, he comes back, Mark Harris, and says, here's the thing, I can't give you proper testimony because I've had a stroke and I'm, I, got, I have memory issues. And I, I, the first thing I thought was, well, should you be running for office yeah. then? Uh, but that's a whole that's other what conversation. People are asking. That's, what a lot of, that's what a lot of people on social media are saying. If you've got recall issues against this, do we want a guy with recall issues? Granted, listen, we, you know, I haven't seen the medical records, but I take the pastor at his word uh, that he had this. If, in fact, you've had those medical issues, uh, is he fit for office? Wow. All right. David, thank you so much.